Hey guys, it's Dylan and welcome to the vlog. And first and foremost, I'm sorry if the quality in the video and the audio change. That's because I no longer have my kit lens. So I can't record using my DSLR wide enough to make it a vlogging camera. And I know it's been quite a while since my last upload. But today, I'm really quite excited because I have a project and that is customizing my mechanical keyboard. And take note that this is not going to be a tutorial. But rather, this is just going to be a log on what I'm going to be doing. But if ever I have some mistakes or some useful things, along the way you can go ahead and take note of them now that that's out of the way we're gonna customize the rack key mat the original rack key mat so there are three things that we are gonna do for this keyboard number one we're gonna wrap it in this this is a carbon fiber texture vinyl wrap number two we are gonna remove the switches we are gonna desolder them and attach them again the reason being is that i just want to experience how to desolder and solder key switches because in the future i'm planning to build my own keyboard also another reason is that we can attach this cleanly to the aluminum plate and the case and number three we are gonna change the keycaps so let's go <laughs> First off, I started with pulling the keycaps off the keyboard. Once that was done, I can now clearly see the screws that was holding the aluminum plate in place, so I grab a screwdriver and remove them. Once you remove all the screws, the back plate can now be easily taken off the case and now the PCB is now exposed. I didn't want to spend a fortune on the tool so I found the cheapest materials I can find. I know it's recommended to buy a proper soldering iron but I'm not gonna do this often so I opted to buy a cheap one. As you can see I was already able to remove a single switch and I made sure that the first switch I removed was from a key that I never used. I plugged in the board on my laptop and shorted the key to see if it was still working. And yep, it still was. So now I continue removing the switches and this is by far the most tedious process. I had trouble removing them because the solder sucker doesn't seem to get all the tin so there was some residue left behind. I actually had to push down on the switch for it to pop off the PCB. Do not ever do this for obvious reasons. All the switches are now removed so we have our aluminum plate and our PCB. I did damage the PCB, it's my first time to solder and desolder so I knew that this wasn't gonna be a perfect task. However, I tested out the PCB and the keys were still working and even those that aren't, they started working again once a switch was attached. So I was quite a bit surprised. After that, I removed the stabilizers from the aluminum case. I didn't plan on lubing the stabilizers but I remembered that I had some lubricant specifically for plastics lying around. This isn't for keyboards, actually this is for Rubik's Cube, this is called the Cubicle Weight 5. I have this lying around because at some point in my life I was really into cubing. It has the same purpose as what you would normally use and which is to lubricate plastic on plastic contact so I just opted to use it. I also clipped the stabilizers. Once that was done, I took the aluminum plate and started putting on the vinyl wrap. I clean it beforehand and wipe it with microfiber cloth to make sure no dust is gonna get in between the sticker and the plate. After applying the vinyl wrap, I had to cut out the holes for the switches and the stabilizers. I resoldered all the switches back into the PCB and this was such a nightmare. The soldering job was so 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 bad that it wasn't passable even as a beginner. Most of the keys are horribly done, it was only by the end of the project that I got the hang of it and it was also by the end that I found out that you needed to clean your soldering iron with flux. Yes, I'm an idiot. Yeah. 
I fired up a keyboard tester and surprisingly almost all the keys are working. Some didn't but all I had to do was resolder them and they were working again. Then I wrapped the plastic case as well with vinyl wrap although I didn't do quite a good job on the edges. And after I attached the backplate to the case, I opened up a keyboard tester and everything still works. The F8 key needs to be pressed down quite hard though, but I didn't bother resoldering it since I don't use it that often and other than that, I'm not really gonna use this keyboard, I'm just gonna keep it for novelty purposes, as well as sentimental purposes since this is my first customized keyboard. So we are finally done with this project and it took a little over two weeks simply because the task of soldering and desoldering is so tedious and other than that I had to wait for the custom keycaps to arrive as you can see the keyboard is actually on my back. It's not gonna be my main keyboard, actually it's not something that I'm gonna be using. I did consider it bringing to the office but that's really gonna depend. Also after lubing the switches, that lubing phase that we just did, there is a world of difference you guys like I swear there is a world of difference when you lube your keyboard I didn't even use the proper lube for keyboards I actually use cubicle weight 5 like I mentioned in the video there's just a really significant difference when you lube your stabilizers not your keyboard your stabilizers I mean the shift key the enter key the backspace key the space bar no longer rattles and like I said it's a world of difference I can't believe that I'm just doing this now so that is it for this video and it's definitely something that i'm gonna be doing more on this channel if finances allow me to but yeah it was really fun my soldering job was crap but still it's really enjoyable and now i'm just gonna display a few glam shots before we end the video